Welcome to Tenacity, where we explore the forgotten skills that can ensure our survival and self-sufficiency. I'm Dr. Bradley Garrett, and in today's episode, we're diving into the crucial realm of communication, especially when our usual channels fail us in times of emergency. From war-torn landscapes to the aftermath of natural disasters, today I want to cover the skills you need to regain control over communication when your phone goes silent. Tenacity. The things we do to survive. There are three things I want to cover here. Long-range two-way radios, building a radio receiver, and using satellite communication. Two-way radios are a great way to keep in touch with another person, like a neighbor, if your mobile phone goes down or gets jammed. The Family Radio Service, or FRS frequencies, were developed for consumer use after World War II. And the range on these is limited to something like a mile, so they only really work well for keeping in touch with close neighbors. But they won't pick up radio stations, cordless phones, baby monitors, or emergency services. You get a clear channel. Now, a GMRS long-range radio, this is part of the General Mobile Radio Service, service will give you up to a five mile range, but they pick up all sorts of other chatter. In some situations, you might find that really useful. Like for instance, if you're trying to hear whether emergency services are mobilizing to get to you if you're stuck somewhere. However, to operate them, you're going to need a license from the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC. Luckily, they're only $35. They don't require an exam. They're good for 10 years, so it's worth getting one. Now, when speaking over the GMRS radio, Remember that anyone could be listening, and you don't want to cause panic or interrupt someone else's communication, which may be important, obviously. So this is where the five C's of radio communication come into play. Conciseness, clarity, confidence, control, and capability. These five C's are the reason why radio has its own Argo, some of which you'll be familiar with. Affirmative for yes, negative for no, over when your transmission's finished, or over and out, meaning I'm finished and the channel is available now. So building a radio might sound like a daunting task, but it can be surprisingly straightforward. In a survival scenario, having the ability to receive information can be an absolute game changer. You can construct a basic radio using easily accessible materials. Basic AM, FM radio receiver, for instance, can be built using a printed circuit board, resistors, capacitors, an antenna, a speaker, and a battery. With some basic know-how, you can assemble these components to create a functional radio that operates without needing an external power source. I bought this one online for about 25 bucks and I should be able to put it together in just a few hours. Another great thing to have is a hand crank radio. These can be purchased, again, very inexpensively. I think I got this one for about 25 bucks. The hand crank will get a radio broadcast going, so you don't even need batteries. And many have the added bonus of acting as both a flashlight and a USB charger. This is one thing that I absolutely recommend everyone has in their house. In extreme situations where conventional communication methods are entirely cut off, satellite communication can bridge the gap, enabling you to connect with the outside world even in the most remote locations. So a few years ago, I traveled for two months through the Australian outback living out of my Jeep, and often I would literally drive for days on dirt roads without mobile signal or Wi-Fi to be found anywhere. And it really made me realize how much we take communication for granted. Some of my friends were even annoyed with me that I would go dark for a few days as if this wasn't the natural state of things until the early 1990s. What I ended up doing to make everyone happy on that trip was sending out a a group text message every few days over satellite, letting everyone know that I was still alive. And I have to say, it it was great to have and had the added benefit of being able to call for rescue if I got seriously stranded, which at one point I almost was, just before preparing to cross the thousand sand dunes through the Simpson Desert, where rescue was really challenging, my Jeep broke down. Luckily, it broke down at a roadhouse, so I didn't have to use the communicator, but I was really glad that I had it in the vehicle. So wrapping up here, it might not seem like communication, but signal fires, flares, and giant SOS signs are also ways of communicating if you're in distress. Though obviously you need to be careful with these methods. Setting a signal fire on a beach somewhere is one thing, but if you end up burning down hundreds of acres unintentionally because you shot a flare into a mountainside or something, it's not going to win you any points with the firefighters who have to save you. So that wraps up this week's episode of Tenacity. I'm Dr. Bradley Garrett, reminding you that communication is not just about words. It's the lifeline we create in times of need. Stay tuned for more episodes where we uncover the forgotten skills that empower us to thrive. Until next time, stay sharp and stay safe.